Welcome here to the Smash Evening Show right here on Smash FM here on Lockdown Tuesday here in Melbourne. And of course, uh, let's continue on the music theme in particular. And, and uh, well, we get to catch up with one of my uh, good friends, of course. Uh, we both went to high school at the same high school up in Queensland in Harvey Bay. And of course, she's now in Brisbane at the moment because uh, of course she's one of the uh, most amazing music artists that I've seen uh of course, especially when I was in high school in particular, and of course she's continuing that right now as well. Uh, her name is Kimberly. She joins us right now. Thanks, Kimberly, for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Will, and thanks for saying that. That's so nice. <laughs> no worries. Well, uh, unusual year this year. Um, tell us a bit about uh, what have you been doing to keep yourself motivated in the music side of things. Yes, well, here in Brisbane is a little different to where you are in Melbourne. Um, but when COVID all popped off and we had to go into lockdown, I was pretty lucky in that I was able to do most of my work online. So I currently work part time as a marketing and culture coordinator for the Jazz Music Institute, which is a specialist jazz university here in Brisbane. Um, I also study there, which is kind of funny. I'm, I'm going to graduate this year too. And I've also got a job there. Interesting world. Um, so that was really cool because I could do everything online and it was really fun. We were creating some, you know, fun things for the students to do, like watch jazz documentaries together. Um, we did a jazz trivia night and yeah, I was able to work from home, which was great. Uh, and then I also teach on the side. So I teach voice and piano. So I was able to do that all through Zoom and teach online. Um, the only thing that wasn't a thing was gigs, which broke my heart, but it was also kind of nice to have a little break and then to, you know, just work on my craft in my home space and practice at home. So I found myself playing a lot of piano. Funnily enough, I, um, I'm, I'm a jazz vocalist, but I found myself playing a lot of classical piano. I think it was just, you know, moody and I was at home alone and, you know, a nice thing to do on my own. But yeah, that, that's been me. And now that COVID has started opening, uh, sorry, clearing up here in Queensland mostly and the restrictions have been opening up, I um, things are pretty much back to normal. I'm going back into the office and I'm going back to face-to-face -to -face teaching. I've had one or two little gigs. Um, yeah so hopefully things are back on on the train here in Queensland of going back to some kind of normal. Now you mentioned that you've done uh, one or two gigs yourself uh, just a moment ago tell us where they were and how did that all go with the new COVID uh, normal? Yeah so the first gig I did back was a little jazz duo gig at Gertie's Bar and Restaurant. It's a ah. lovely spot in New Farm here in Brisbane. The owner Edwin is a sweetheart and it was just myself and a piano player named Benjamin Van Joel. He's an incredible jazz pianist and we had so much fun. It was absolutely packed though which was kind of anxiety inducing. We were like is this normal? Like is this are we, are we, um, you know are we okay here? Are we being COVID safe? But it was it was all safe. Everyone was seated, you know, and you're, you're allowed to have that many people in there, but I just couldn't believe how many people um, were there. I've done gigs at this place so many times, like about once a month, we usually do gigs there. And I think that was the busiest I've ever seen it. So it was really, um, that was really heartwarming, you know, to see the place so busy. And because um, BVJ, that's Benjamin Vangel for short, BVJ, I call him. Uh, because BBJ and I hadn't played together for ages. It was just so fun. We we had such a good time with it. Um, what else? Actually, the uh, actually the other couple of gigs I've had um, have either been like live stream, like online ones, um, or actually they ended up getting cancelled. And at one point I actually just held a gig inside my house um, <laughs> for my friends. It started, it was so, it was so funny, you know, we, we had a gig locked in and we were going to play in the Roma Street Parklands and no, no, sorry, not Roma Street Parklands, uh, just outside Brisbane Powerhouse Forecourt. And yeah, it started raining and so it got cancelled. 
And then I, I knew a heap of my friends were so keen. They were like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen a gig in so long. And I just was like, you know what? Let's just do it at my house. And I cleared up my living room and then I just um, held a mini little fun casual gig in my house and all of my friends who I knew were coming popped by. That was when we were allowed to have like 20 people in the house at a time. So it was all COVID safe. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> Now you mentioned you did some virtual performances on, uh, also on social media. Um, how did you try to adapt to that? Yeah, it was really interesting. It was mostly just fun stuff. You know, we we just did jams and we just popped them up on my Instagram like a live stream. Um, yeah, it 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 felt funny because you know you want to you want to connect with people and you want to. You want to hear people clapping or, you know, saying like, but it's, it's kind of, it was interesting when you would look at the feed and you'd still see people, you know, doing clap emojis or being like, woo, banger, love it and stuff like that. So I don't know. I still felt like there were people there and, and watching and zoning in and we could kind of do what we wanted. And there also wasn't this added pressure, you know, it was kind of, if people didn't want to be there, they could just log out or, <laughs> or log in, you know, so. Yeah, I feel like it, it didn't feel that different. It, it, was, it was fun and it was a bit more laid back and we didn't really mind if we made too many mistakes and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, now, do you have any other, you know, future gigs coming up very soon between now and the end of the year considering how good Queensland is controlling the COVID situation? Yeah, so... Um, I have a gig with Boss Moxie. So it's, we're sort of, uh, how do I describe Boss Moxie? We're like a doom scar orchestra, like a big 12 piece. Um, and I'm the vocalist for it. Uh, and yeah, we're doing a gig at the old museum in oh, November. I, I should know the date. I think it's like the third of November, something like that with Big Dead and slow joy there are another two brisbane bands um and that's going to be uh, a mix of our album that's coming out really soon ego toxin and also um, a mix of a heap of new stuff that we've been writing um but that's about it for original band stuff at the moment but i'm doing i'll be doing little jazz gigs here and there i'm doing another gertie's gig on the 12th of september so just another little um jazz piano gig with bbj then but as i said you know the gigs are few and far between at the moment but i'm still stoked that i even have things booked in at this point it's great yeah uh, now you just mentioned about albums and singles just a moment ago in your last response um do you have any currently out that people can listen to yeah see me personally no i um have been doing just jazz um and i haven't recorded any of that it's all been live um on my journey throughout doing my bachelor um but ego toxin uh the boss moxie album will be coming out really soon we're just currently waiting on our vinyls to be um completed uh and shipped over and then we'll be releasing that and it's a big it's a big, long, non-stop piece of, of music. Um, I think I've recorded my vocals on maybe two tracks in that. So I came into Boss Moxie a little bit later. Uh, before that, it was um, written by another two of the members, um, that album. But the new stuff that we're writing, I'm a lot more prominent on. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to start recording that soon. And that will be released a bit later too. Um, I'm also in a, a little band called Crunge. Um, and we have been writing music for a little while now, but we haven't had the chance to record anything, but we did one show just before COVID and we haven't been able to do another since. Um, but I'm really, really excited about that band. That one, that band really feels close to my heart. Um, it's sort of like a neo soul kind of, um, psych rock project, I, I suppose. And, uh, we've got a lot of stuff that we want to record and put out in the world eventually. But yeah, I should really get onto that and record more of my stuff. <laughs> now, 
Of course, I have to ask. Now, obviously, you're in Brisbane at the moment, and obviously, you work there as well. Have you ever have you gone back to Harvey Bay and perform anything um, in the in on the Fraser Coast? Actually, no, I haven't. Oh. <laughs> at all. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think about it now. No, I haven't. Um, one of my singing teachers. Shani Russell, she went up there and performed at the Harvey Bay Jazz Club. I didn't even know they had one. Um, no, <laughs> and, and my yeah, <laughs> and my mum and dad, uh, my mum and dad went and watched her, and they loved it. Maybe I'll have to book myself in for a little gig at the Harvey Bay Jazz Club or something like that. Or, but yeah, I think uh, I think the other two bands I'm in, Boss Moxie and Crunch. I'm not I'm not sure, you know, how we'd go in Harvey Bay at this stage. So I haven't booked anything in up there. But I go back and visit my mum and dad a lot, you know. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. Don't worry, don't worry. I haven't been back to Harvey Bay since, so don't worry. Um, yeah, now, I love it. <laughs> now, of course, uh, well, we might as well go into your music journey. Obviously, I'm assuming it all started in Harvey Bay. Um, so, uh, how, how did it all start and why did you choose music? which I've got a feeling oh. is very similar how I got involved in music. It's a really, it's a really weird and interesting journey I've been on. I mean, when I, you know, I, you know, this in high school, I loved, you know, performing music. I also did a lot of drama and a lot of dance and things like that too. And, but when, you know, we had a, we had those music school nights, Sonic Blast. Yes. I actually found, I found a bit of a love for working behind the scenes as well. I remember at one point I was like the stage manager, the producer. I was like running around on the night and I also was performing. And everybody, I remember, you know how Chev, our teacher Chev gave us little torches and he engraved yes. like our names into them. Yes. Mine, I got engraved into my mum because I was just running around like a mad woman, you know, looking after everybody but also performing on the night as well i remember you know like handing over like the little walkie talkie that we had and yes. running on stage and playing a, a song with um monica and then running off and then getting straight back into it and doing lights and everything um so when i left school i didn't actually go and study music i i decided to study a bachelor of creative industries at qt instead just because i i i I guess I didn't think at the time, that time in my life, I didn't have the confidence to think, oh, I could do something creatively with my life and, you know, make it a career or make money out of it. And I, and I, so I instead decided to try and work behind the scenes. And then I, yeah, I found myself doing lots though. You know, I didn't, I didn't just work in events. I ended up doing media and PR and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then you know it got to a point where I kind of realized actually Kim what are you doing you know you you love performing and you've completely forgot that part of yourself so mm. then I went and studied a Bachelor of Music which I'm almost done with and yeah the, now I'm doing both somehow which is which is reminiscent of those days uh, back in Harvey Bay so I, I'm feeling quite quite fulfilled in that way now uh, when I look back on it, but the journey has been long, what, nine years until I get to this point where now I feel comfortable and I'm doing both at the same time and feeling confident in it as well. Now, why did you choose um, jazz music as your style of music to, uh, to perform? Because I don't think you were ever a jazz music artist, were you? No, I mean, in high school, I listened to heavy metal and yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, totally. Um, or like pop. Uh, look, to be honest, a couple of my friends that I knew who were amazing musicians said that they'd studied there uh, at this particular uni, JMI. Um, I didn't want to go to the, the con or um, any of these bigger kind of uh, music schools. And I'd heard about JMI and it was a smaller kind of tight knit community. Um, and then I looked further into it and I realized that learning jazz makes you an incredibly adaptable uh, musician. You, if you are jazz trained, you're able to be thrown into multiple different genres because essentially one of the biggest things of, about jazz is the ability to improvise on the spot and communicate well with your fellow players. You know, 
I could, if I wanted to now, I could go over to Japan and walk into a jazz bar and call a tune and, you know, just be like, I want to do in a mellow tone in E flat, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, and I just do a little rhythm click and then call the tempo and then I'd be one, two, I want to, and then they'd start. They'd know exactly what I'm talking about, hopefully. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and then I could, I could perform with people I've, I don't even know. Um, and I found that a very beautiful part about jazz. It's a, like a language, a whole other musical language that universally is well known. And you're also able to express yourself and improvise. And I actually, all my life, have loved making up melodies in my head and hearing harmony and things like that too. So I didn't even realize until I started studying jazz just how good I would be at uh, scatting and improvising and coming up with different melodies and things like that too. So it, it really all just kind of meshed and happened. And then I fell in love with jazz from there, you know, I didn't know much about jazz at all. And then, yeah, now, now I've basically immersed myself into it. I've fallen in love with it. And a lot of the greatest singers, in my opinion, in the world came from a jazz background. So yeah. Now you mentioned that you teach as well as uh, obviously working as well as studying and teaching. Uh, what have you learned from uh, especially teaching? Oh my gosh, so much. Um, in, in general, uh, teaching has improved my piano playing skills. And I think as a singer, you know, we don't have buttons that we can press yes. um, <laughs> to make sounds. So it's really cool to also know an instrument as a singer uh, and like learn an instrument and be able to uh, explain in a little bit more detail with music theory what you're doing because sometimes as a singer, you're just singing away and you're like, I don't actually know what is going on right now. I'm just creating, which is beautiful. But it's also when you're trying to teach it to somebody, you say, no, okay, like, you know, um, this, this little bit here that you're freaking out about where you have to sing this note to this note, it's if I show you it on the piano, they're actually not that far away from one another. It's all in your head. You think it's like a huge leap that you have to jump for this massive note up here. Um, and it, it's really interesting like that. You can kind of psych yourself out because you can't visualize it. Um, and, and that's something that I've, I've really found was pretty cool. Um, what else? Yeah, look, in general, teaching has just improved, improved my musicianship so much. I think that um, as well, the piano is just such an incredible instrument where if you know music theory, you can look at the piano and see all the shapes and the patterns and see the music theory in front of you. Um, and it's, it's really cool to explain that to people as well. Um, and also, and also explain as a singer for the singers how their body works. I find that um, a lot of people come in to learn singing and they, they think that they only sing one way and one way only, but there are so many different ways to sing and so many different ways you can use your body um, mm. to produce different sounds. You know, the way that your mouth is shaped, where the air is in your body, which part of the body you're pushing the air from, how your diaphragm, your stance, um, the tone, the timbre, how lightly you sing, how hard you sing. It's lots of, lots of different ways to make music and to produce sound. I guess going back to our high school uh, times, uh, obviously, yeah, I'm assuming this is both uh, mine and your uh, favourite teachers, uh, music teachers, of course, Chef and uh, also Miss Oldman, um, what have you learnt from them that you took into your teaching from those two? Hmm. I'm, I'm going to specifically focus on Chef, I think, um, because I, I, found, I found Chev took a little bit more of a personal interest in, in me as a musician and, or just as a, as a human. Um, while I was in school, you know, he came up to me at, at, um, after Sonic and was like, you, you know, you've done an amazing job. Um, you know, Sonic wouldn't have, you know, been as 
uh, what's the word, as cohesive and, you know, it wouldn't have been good without your help, you should consider going and, um, you know, working as a producer or working in that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And so Chev, Chev actually also was one of those people who kind of like pushed me in that direction to, to go and study, um, yeah, event management and, and how to, you know, put, it, put an event on and, and work behind the scenes. Um, I think Chev also just had a very laid back and fun approach and wasn't too serious about it. And I think, unfortunately, some people can get so serious about music. You know, I find that I have a, I have a lot of students who are so young. They're like, you know, seven or eight years old and they're crying over their Amy B scales. And I'm just like, guys, it's just some scales. You do not need to work yourself up into a frenzy, you know? It's fun. Music's supposed to be fun. Enjoy it. Don't take yourself so seriously. Don't be so hard on yourself. Because I remember when I was younger, I was so hard on myself. And uh, I, I really found that Chev, for one, was really laid back. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was fun for him. And um, I think that that's probably what I took away from that. And what I've learned through teaching as well is just, you just want it to be fun. And, and that, that's what makes people learn as well when they're excited about something and they're enjoying it, they continue to do it. If it becomes bland and quite rigid and very textbook, it, it just takes, it just takes the fun and the passion out of it. And then you're not as enthusiastic to do it, you know? Yeah. And what does the music uh, say mean to you now? Music means everything to me. I suppose I've built my life around music. Um, and during a time like this, you know, during a pandemic, when the economy is not looking very secure, ah, uh, it, it, is, it is still so prominent and still so important to my life. It's not, it's never been about, money it's never been about you know uh, fame and riches and fortunes and what's the word social validation it's it's just it really just fulfills my soul mm -hmm. i music makes me very very happy um it always has listening to music making playlists for my friends dancing to music roller skating to music singing music, playing music, you know, music is, is literally, it, yeah, it's just, it means so much to me. That's, that's that. <laughs> Do you have any long or short term ambitions in jazz music? In jazz music, I think it would be cool if I could record, um, a little, you know, a little EP or something like that with some jazz standards on it um, of, that are my own arrangements, something cool. I have always wanted to sing with a big band. Just putting those vibes out there. One day I will sing with a big band. <laughs> um, but I think my goals are a little bit more situated away from jazz. I, I'd like to start my own kind of solo project. So the projects that I'm in, Boss Moxie and Crunch, are, are very collaborative. Um, you know, we all create, create together. But I think uh, just as a musician, I would like to create my own project that I've composed and arranged myself and, um, you know, created my own vision around it. So I'm hoping, you know, I've sort of set it as like a five-year plan. In about five years' time, hopefully, I'd, I'd, I'd release a little EP of my own under an, another moniker that is purely my own kind of project. Yeah. Uh, what would be your advice to our listeners and viewers out there that should get involved in music? Well, if you love it, don't, don't shy away from it, you know, and, and don't be afraid to, show that passion to other people too. I think, I think that's what really helped me succeed throughout my younger stages. And then also up until now, you know, people can see that I'm passionate about it. People can see that I care about it and that I'll do a good job, you know, because of that passion. I think, 
I think as well, it's important to be adaptable, to, to be willing to just take initiative and tr try new things, learn new things, you know, be ever curious as well, because mm. things are constantly changing and there's always something new to learn. So if, if, you're that type of character. I feel like you, you can succeed in really any industry. If you just show that you're passionate, you just be a good human overall and yeah, be adaptable and curious and willing to learn, I think. Now let's finish up with a couple of lighthearted questions as well. Um, any embarrassing moments throughout your music journey? Oh, I'm trying to think embarrassing moments in my music journey you know i i'm i think i'm quite fortunate i haven't had anything super embarrassing apart from maybe you know in the wind like a, a dress flying up or something like that um which i've just laughed about anyway uh but there was one time actually we bbj and i were playing at gertie's and uh these two girls they were incredibly intoxicated and uh they came up to us and started trying to dance near the piano and then they fell over onto the high end of the piano and like slammed into it and pushed the whole piano back about 30 centimeters. <laughs> and honestly, it was like a, like a record scratch face crack kind of moment. Like the whole venue just stopped because they hit like the high end of the piano. So it was like, dink. And then also they knocked over a glass of beer, which smashed everywhere. And the music stopped because we were shocked. We were like singing, playing away. And then suddenly boom. And we were both just like, and so everybody in the venue just turns and is like, what the heck just happened? And these two girls, oh my God. I felt so sorry for them. <laughs> They, they like sheepishly like wandered over to their table, picked up their bags and walked straight out of the venue. And everyone was like, wow. Like, <laughs> and, and it's caught on camera. I have a video of it, which I'll send you after this meeting. It is right. honestly brown cardigan worthy. It is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I would definitely love to see that. Uh, now... <laughs> Do you ever forget a lyric to a song? Or have you Oh done? my god. All the time. All the time. It's it's impossible. Like you you're singing along and then you know you just it just your mind just blanks and you yes. think it's there but it's not. And so thankfully with jazz you can just make it up on the spot. Sometimes I mm. even say, and I've forgotten a lyric again. I can just I can just scat my way through it. It's fine because it's jazz, but <laughs> in other genres, not so much. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah, very nice. now, of course, one of my favorite memories of uh, performing music uh, was obviously back in high school at Yerangan High. Giving, I'm giving a bit of a shout out. Uh, it's obviously Sonic Blast, uh, which I was been involved in, which you have been involved in. Um, yeah. What's your best memories from uh, Sonic Blast? Honestly, I, I loved like the, the setup day as well, you know, just the yes. day where we all got to, we got to take all of our classes off and we could just yes. hang out in the hall during the day and do like uh, all the rehearsals or the, what do you call it, the sound checks and, Correct. you know, walking up into the back and checking out how everyone's going with lighting and then walking out, walking over and seeing all the people who are doing the curtains and I don't know, it was just a big working machine and the cogs were turning and uh, I it's, it's also it was also just nice I felt like you know I went to another high school before Harvey Bay and I, I only uh, I only went to started going to Urangan High in grade nine and That's before right. that I lived in like country country New South Wales and you know the arts are not as highly regarded uh, as uh, not as I guess there's not as many options and I I found that, you know, going to Urangan, I did three music subjects in grade 12. And that was insane to me. I was like, I can do three music subjects in grade 12. You know, I can do a certificate. I do regular OP music and music extension. Yeah. I was like, wow. Um, yeah. So just, you know, just having the music block there where you could go and hide in the music block as well during <laughs> yes. like, uh, 
Let's go and play some music. Um, and then also, yeah. Yeah, I, like just the environment really was like a savior for me in high school. I, yeah, it was great. That's right. I do. I do remember your first year at uh, Urangan because it was my last year at Urangan. Uh, so I do remember that. Uh, do you still keep in contact with any of your friends at Urangan High? Um. Yes. I mean, I, I have them all like on Facebook and Instagram and things like that. Uh, but I don't really zone in too much on, on, uh, what they're doing. When I go, when I head back, a lot of people, uh, that I was friends with aren't really there anymore. Um, yeah, I, I still keep in touch with, I don't know if you remember my mate, Jackie Newell. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I do. Jackie, Newell, Jackie Newell is like my best friend ever. I love that woman. Um, we went overseas together. We went to Vietnam, Cambodia, and Thailand together in 2018. And yeah, we're, we're still really close. And uh, I'm also really close with Ebony, Ebony yes. Maeve. Uh, yes. She is in Sydney and she is killing it as an actress in um, down there. She is one of my good friends too that I still keep in touch with. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. I mean, I, I keep in touch with other people every every so often when I go back to Harvey Bay or online, but that's about it. How about you? Um, no, not as much. Um, yeah, I barely kept in contact with anyone. Uh, I was, I think I've been in contact probably two or three because they're all down here in Melbourne, but, uh, but yeah, I barely contact not much at all. But like I actually, that, yeah. I actually, yeah. miss, I actually missed the 10th year reunion. Um, because the 10th oh, no. year, yeah, so the tenth year was two years ago, um, in Queensland. But because I was doing sports down here, it was like in the middle of sports finals um, down here. I I couldn't like I couldn't miss the sports finals because that's what I do. Um, so I missed the whole reunion up <laughs> up in Queensland. So yeah, I think mine's next year, twenty twenty one. I'm not gonna miss it either. Um. We've already invited Mr. McMorrow. Shout out. Mr. McMorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be great. I'm keen. I'm definitely going to go back and, and see everybody and see how everyone's been doing. It's funny though, you know, 10 years flies by and you think that you're going to be, you know, an astrophysicist or something by the, by the time. But it's also just like, actually, my life is not really that exciting. I don't really have too much new stuff to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We'll see. We'll we'll see how it goes. I'm just excited to see everyone really. Yeah. Now, when you perform in live um gigs and that, do you ever forget what venue um you are in when you introduce yourself? No, but I've forgotten my band members' names before. <laughs> <laughs> um like, you know, I'll just be, I'll just be standing there and I I still get a bit nervous sometimes before gigs like so you know, I'll be standing there and I'll be like, and I just want to thank the double bass player, uh, Casey. Yeah. You know, or, and I, it's just completely blanks from my mind because I'm, I'm a bit nervous or something like that. I know their name. I'm looking straight at their face. I've been playing with them for ages, but because I'm just a bit nervous, like I completely blank and I'm like, help me out here. <laughs> <laughs> why is that not coming to my mind in this moment yeah <laughs> but no I've never forgotten the venue <laughs> uh. um well far off from that what was the reactions from your band members when you like in the moment when you actually forget their name um was it the one time it was really noticeable I kind of tried to cover it up uh I was like I was like, and this is, what was your name again, mate? <laughs> <laughs> and he just, and he, and he looks at me and he's like, Scott. And I was like, I was like, ah, just kidding, just kidding. I'm like, just kidding. This is Scott, everybody, Scott. <laughs> and um, yeah, I got away with it. Everyone thought that I was genuinely kidding, but I actually completely blanked and uh <laughs> Anyway, it's fine. It, it, it happens. It's okay. I apologized to him afterwards. I was like, hey, I just had a complete mind blank. I, 
I, I know who you are. I value you as a musician. I respect you. You're amazing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, finish up with, we'll finish up with this one, two last ones, which is, uh, do you have a pre-gig or performance superstition or ritual? Uh, not really, to be honest. I mean... As I said, I still get a little bit nervous uh, before some gigs. Uh, usually they're just big ones or, you know, if I'm feeling you've done prepared. Um, so I'll, you know, do some stretches or I'll take some nice deep diaphragmatic breaths just to calm myself down. And then sometimes I counterintuitively just neck a beer or something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. I don't really have any, you know, pre-performance rituals or superstitions at all, no. And for everyone out there that should follow your music uh, and your bands uh, on social media and the music channels, how can they go about it? Uh, yeah, so on Facebook, I have my own uh, personal page uh, under Kimberly Hansen. Um, and then you can also follow the Crunch page. It's spelled K-R-U-N-J uh, or Boss Moxie is uh, another page that you can follow. And they're all on Instagram as well. My Instagram is uh, Kimmel A, K-I-M-A-L, triple A-Y. Um, it's on private at the moment, actually. I should probably make that public. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um, I don't know. I had, I had a weird instance where somebody was like harassing me a little bit um, in, yeah. the, in the online space. And so I just made my uh, profile private. It's funny that, that these things happen, you know, in the social mm. space when you when you put yourself out there in a in a public forum and some people just want to be and make you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> if if you want to follow that, I will I will happily accept um, any requests and things like that on the Instagram until I feel comfortable making that public again for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, that yeah, is fair enough. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kimberly, thank you so much for, for joining us. It's awesome to finally catch up after 12 years. Um, Absolutely. Back in our, back in our high so school much. days. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, so, <laughs> thanks so much. And uh, hopefully we'll get to catch up in person uh, for proper catch up uh, in person once uh, you come down to Melbourne. And, and do you have a message to our M Melbourne uh, listeners? Uh, just, you know, keep going, stay strong, stay safe. And yeah, just know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you guys are doing an amazing job. And, you know, everyone loves Melbourne. We really do. And if you've, if you've been seeing anything online or, uh, you know, about being a Victorian in this time, or you're feeling a bit of, uh, what's the word a bit of hostility from people uh because you're a victorian at this time like ignore those up because yeah because i've just noticed you know um i've just noticed you know i've seen a lot of stuff on social media working in social media i've seen people being like oh victorians like you know how could they you know let this happen and all this kind of crap in my opinion mm. uh and i think ignore that like, honestly, this could have happened to anyone, anywhere, like any of any of the cities. It just so happened that it happened in Melbourne. So all I have to say is ignore the negativity, bask in positivity, all will be well. <laughs> no, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Cheers, Will. No worries. And that's Kimberly Hansen there, of course. Uh it was fun for me, a great catch up with her son from my high school uh, there at Urangan High, of course, uh, talking a bit about her jazz music uh, journey so far and her music journey in general, of course. If you want to uh, um, follow her on social media and on the music channels, of course, uh, we'll put all those details up uh, uh, in the next uh, couple of days or so. There's more on the Smash Evening Show right after this. Don't go away here on Lockdown Tuesday. <laughs>